right, so listen to this. This is on the compression stroke of the mag cylinder. So this went down 16 in two minutes at wide open. All right, so clearly there's some issues here. Crank's getting sent in either way. Um, I have a feeler gauge, a 3,000 feeler gauge in between the cylinder and the piston down in the center here. Um, but you can definitely hear I think that is the small bore of the connecting rod. It's either the small bore or the big bore. So that's what's going on. Crank is not broken though. So that's good, but yeah, it's going to get sent in either way. It almost seems like it's the big end. Yeah, I think it's the big end of the connecting rod. It's definitely the connecting rod. Oh, that's quite a bit of play there. It just seems like this wrist pin is real loose. Looser than it should be. I mean, both of them are kind of loose, so... I'm not sure if that's wear in the connecting rod. The connecting rod is, uh, they're both pretty loose, so. Okay, so this is what I have found. This is what I'm doing. I got the crank sent out to get rebuilt. And at this point, I got it down this far. I'm just going to go ahead and redo this. I'm going to actually powder coat the heads and cylinders and crankcase at this point. I mean, I got it out. Um, you know, I'm going to have to keep busy and do something meantime. So I figured, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So, um, yeah, that's where I'm at. And I'm not 100% sure about things it seems i'm not sure if that's normal or if that's from idling or what the situation is but i'm getting a hot like right at about 140 psi on both cylinders so there's not really it doesn't seem like there's any issues going on so i'm not sure if that is blow by like i said from idling or what I don't know why it would have that um, the other thing that I found was there is some slight darkening on the bottom of the piston so I don't know I don't know what's going on with this stupid thing but um, I'm still just kind of debating on what's up so I'm going to get I'm pretty much just going to I gotta go through it. I mean, sure the reeds and everything are the reeds all look fine. I mean the pistons technically look fine, the cylinders technically look fine, but uh the heads I'm definitely going to resurface those because it looked like there was uh it's I found gray fluid on the bottom of the crankcase. I think it was the bottom half. There was a bit of gray fluid down here, so that is definitely going to be um, something that is from coolant of, you know, one way or another. I have an idea of why. Okay, so 
this engine was uh it came from uh a guy that had it in a 98 zr 600 my wife's sled or the sled that you know i gotta restore it again or i gotta rebuild again but it overheated on one cylinder and i never resurfaced with sandpaper the heads so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and i'm thinking what happened was and you can see right there i'm thinking those are signs of coolant coming into the cylinder so either it was having problems with carburation before i mean I, that's what i'm saying like there's so many different things that it could be i got the carburetor figured out because it had mismatched parts in it and i didn't go through because i thought that it was you know it started running fine after i put the bigger fuel pump on there and so I didn't realize that someone would ever give it mismatched and bigger jet ne or needle jets. So I did that, and it had bigger cutaways, only a half a degree. I'm not sure how big of a difference that makes, but I got those back, got the carburation back to where it's supposed to be, stock 40 mains and four, or 420 mains and 40 pilots. And so I'm going to go for, from there with that. Stators rewound. Um, the CDI box did have some cracks around the back side of it, uh, so I ended up getting all that out of there and then re it after I cooked it for three hours at 170 degrees. I've tried different coils, so hopefully electrical is all good. And the reason was either because I didn't, I didn't resurface the heads like I should after it overheated, which the manual says. I didn't realize that then. So it's either from that or maybe I let it idle too long, or I heated it up too much when I was t doing an oil consumption test. I don't know. So either way, I'm going to have at it, redo it, slap it back together, and, um, you know, cross all my T's and dot my I's, and should be good to go. So, and if I still hear, I'm going to mic these. I don't know if... There is too much of a too much play down at the bottom, which doesn't really make sense. That no, never mind. That doesn't even make sense because I mean, unless the whole cylinder is out of whack, which you know what I mean. I'll mic that and I'll get a reading on it. And if it's out, I'll do that during this whole process. And if it's out, then I'll just get a new cylinder, and maybe that's where the little bit of a noise was coming from but i don't think it is it just seems like it was the connecting rods because the connecting rods were pretty blown out on there and i'm thinking it's probably here's the other thing is that when i had these in when i took the cylinders off and then rocked it back and forth it was loose it, i mean loose. it was it just seemed like it had more movement than it should and these wrist pins this is an spi kit so i'm not sure if the wrist pins are just you know kind of blown out or if it's the the piston the wrist pin bore that is worn out and that's just moving it back and forth or what i'm not sure if these spi pistons are just junk or what the situation is i don't know so that's that's where I'm at with this. So I'm going to get some stuff done and buckle down, put my nose to the grindstone, the whole nine yards, and go from there. But otherwise, I mean, cylinders seem to be fine. And But, you know, if they're getting 140 compression, I mean, I don't get that. I mean, it's not bad blow by, whatever it is. So, I don't know. I'll keep you guys posted. So, that's that for now. Hopefully, the next time you see these, they're going to look really good. Because I do have some green. I'm not sure if it's the right green, though. So, I'm going to test that first. So, I got to get to work and bang this stuff out. I'm going to have to get another. I want to get another top end kit because. Not a kit, but um, gasket kit. Because these right here. I painted these with engine paint. I prime, I was to, it was told I was told to prime it first 
and I did, and then I hit it with Rust-Oleum engine paint, and it can handle up to 500 degrees or whatever. But the head bolt O-rings were like they were like glued to the paint. I let this stuff dry, if, you know, the full time. So that's that. Let me keep these in order because I took them out. Starting here from this hole and then one around. So I'm going to keep those in order. I got these ones. I'm going to keep them in order as well. And so that's the situation. This side is the magneto side. This side is the PTO side. And like I said, I heard the noise coming from the magneto side. So this really sucks because I had, it was all buttoned up. I had it all sealed up there wasn't an ounce of oil or, or any type of uh you know leakage from anywhere the thing was tight and now this so here's what it is though so i'm gonna get at it uh, i'm not sure how many of you have ran into this sort of problem to where crankcase stud backs out along with the nut when you are trying to remove a cylinder uh, that's fair to give you Little bit of a tip on how I do it. Show you if you have never seen it done or ran into the issue yourself. You get that red Loctite on there and sometimes it'll get installed without um, getting red Loctite on it or something. I mean, somebody's doing it wrong. Or there wasn't enough put on there. So you want to take two nuts and just crank them together pretty tight. And this is how you would pull the stud out of the case to begin with. Should be able to, that's a little too tight. You can heat it up. So throw a little heat on it. And clearly I'm almost out of that, so. And then you just make it come off. Red Loctite, man, that stuff does good. Put that off to the side there. And then this should be able to just squeeze those. That'll get the top one off. And then if the bottom one, bottom nut seems a little stubborn, you can always just use some fuel line, wrap it around the stud, and then just pinch it like that, and put a wrench on it if you need to. Usually they're not on there that bad, so you won't have to put too much pressure on it, but that's that. I just figured I'd show you guys. Um, it's pretty, pretty easy to do. So that is that. So the rest of this is going to get pulled apart. Now, if you guys have never seen a stud pulled out of a case, it's pretty much the same way. I got a pull out here as well. So unfortunately that one came out and you can either try and use the, the fuel line method once again and just throw a little heat on it. Stuff works pretty good. I 
that's pretty much all you want to do. Now, if you're going to be removing the studs themselves, this one might be pretty tough here. And make sure you give yourself enough threads for both. Lock them together pretty good. Give it a good amount of heat. And what you can do too is back it out a little bit, spray it, and then force it back in a little. And that gets the penetrating oil in there really helps to soak the threads. Then to put these back in, you want to make sure the threads are real clean. Clean out, clean out the The internal threads of the tap if you need to and then put the red loctite on there and then you'll put the you'll lock the nuts together again like that and then you will torque them down this one's stuck on here too let's try this again Just like that. Just gonna fix it. Just gotta fix it before you send it. There it is, folks. Just like that. Just gonna fix it. All right guys, so this is the removal of the mechanical seal. This is obviously on an Arctic cat. And, and I'll admit, I did it the wrong way uh, the first time or two. I would take a screwdriver and just kind of tap this edge to get it to where I could grab it. Well, that was pretty stupid. Um, this is probably the, the safest, best way to do it. Sometimes it can be tougher than others. Let's give it a good yank. That looks like someone this obviously it's a pretty common thing there but yeah you just want to make sure that you get it out just like that. Bearing feels good. Got a bearing down in there as well. Just want to make sure that's twisting good. Yep, that one feels good. But yeah. So that's it. That's your mechanical seal right there. Shaft goes through there. There's a rubber cylinder that goes all the way around that's flexible. And then obviously that spring, the spring puts tension on this race right here, which pushes on the back of this and seals it. And then you have, the sh that'll, obviously the shaft comes up through here, and then you seal any water leaking out of here with this washer here.
just like that. I think that's about, I think it's four and a half foot pounds. So, but that's going to get replaced. And yeah, I figured, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and tear this thing down. Make sure that I'm covering all my bases. I put this much work into this sled so far. I don't want to not do anything or cut any corners. <laughs> so that's that. So I'm going to go ahead and degrease these and tape them and blast them. Cook uh, any impurities out and then coat them. It'll be good. So. so this is everything degreased everything that I'm gonna paint or coat so I'm gonna go with uh, super chrome on the motor mounts I'm definitely gonna go with green on the cylinders and heads and I think this piece I might go black I don't know uh, definitely gonna go black on the cases again on the flywheel housing and the thermostat housing this is the the pto and crank seal cap that's going to be super chrome as well i might go super chrome on this or green and uh that's actually going to be the extent of what I'm coding, so I'm not really gonna go. I mean, it seems like a lot, yeah. Obviously, it's all gotta be blasted and uh, prepped and then shot and coated. So, the super chrome's gonna have to be clear coated, but I figured you know that'll uh, that'll be a good way to go. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna make sure that these heads are nice and level. So I'm going to go ahead and use this quarter inch piece of glass here. And I got, sitting on a towel obviously, I got some 400 grit wet dry sandpaper. And I'm going to go ahead and do the tops of the heads, or the tops of the cylinders as well. And I'll do a couple other pieces, like I did on my 800, I did this surface. And both the ports, I will take, I'll do this side as well. And I think there's a, I'll probably do, it's not a big deal. I'll just lightly hit that as well as the impeller coolant pump housing. So, but I did take the studs out of everything. I'm going to clean the studs up as well. Put those back in. So that's the current progress. 
I'm still waiting on my crank to come back in the mail um, or come back from the shop. I have ordered a full gasket kit, like I said, by Windorosa, as well as I have five locating pins coming. I got two for the crankcase halves and then two for the water pump housing. I have one for the oil pump bearing housing or alignment casing is what it's called, I believe. All right, guys, that's it. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit the alert bell, drop in, say hello, ask any questions, give some friendly advice. You know, other people that get a kick out of this sort of content, please share it on social media to get the chance. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Take care. God bless.